It is why you folks tune into shows like this. What's happening? What do we need to know? Who is making a stride? We've got some names for you today right here on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, welcome to the podcast, the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. I'm Stephen Willis. Um, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Also, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and wherever available wherever you get your podcast. Um, give subscribe. You will not regret it. Thank you very much for that. Anyway, today we're going to talk a lot about three names. These are names that were sent to me, and whenever things get sent to me, that's the reason I kind of perk up about them. Whenever you get little pieces of information, because I get a ton of information that comes in, and then you just kind of sort through. It's like, these are the three things I want to talk about. And then whenever it gets corroborated, you really start paying attention to it. And the first one is um, clicks are developing within the offense, and this happened in the offseason. And this happens on every team. I'm not saying anything negative about that. There might be negative connotations with clicks, uh, but that happens on every team. If you played high school football, there was three players that always hung out together at the detriment of the other 55. It, ju- it just happens. It just does. But anyway, there's a click developing between Jackson Dart, Jalen Robinson, and Michael Trigg. And... If you've listened to our show for any period of time, this is important for this reason. That is the death triangle, essentially, of the Ole Miss offense. And I do not mean that negative in any way towards Ole Miss. But the quarterback, the tight end, and the slot receiver is the emphasis points of this offense. Now, if they're going out and doing that, they probably have faith that Jackson is eventually going to come through and win this job. They... They've seen that. Michael Trigg, he's friends with Jackson Dart. That that is their expectation. But according to Ben Garrett, who kind of backs this up, Jalen Robinson actually went out to California with Jackson Dart to do some route running and quarterback training and working together in the offseason, these offseason throwing groups and such things like that. So that would kind of cooperate this um, story that clicks are a little indeed developing. Now, I do think it's interesting if those three figure out a way to be effective, Jackson Dart's going to start fast and win this job fairly easily because Jalen Robinson is projected to be the number one target in this offense. Michael Trigg is projected to be the number one tight end in this offense and his timing and works out between the two what's going on with Jackson Dart. Look out. They can really take off. Now, we have other news about the wide receiver position that we're going to talk about in the second segment. I think it's a little interesting. You might not think it interesting. But as you know on this show, we do like to take our victory laps. And this is another one we called weeks ago. Um, So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Jackson Dart developing a rapport with Jalen Robinson and developing with Michael Trigg is going to help him as these acclimation days moves forward and then the real defense, the real padded days start to happen. I think it's, I think they'll probably be in pads by the middle of next week. And um, I expect a full padded scrimmage by next weekend. Um, That's just the way this works. But this is a good sign if you are in Camp Jackson Dart, even though I've told you not to pick a quarterback. But if you're in Camp Jackson Dart, this is a good sign. This is one of those internal factors that we told you to look for when it comes to fall camp for clues of where this quarterback competition is going. And having the two top playmakers at the tight um, tight end and slot position join in with you, be kind of in your click, that is a good sign. They would not do that if he did not have a chance to win the job. Even Michael Trick. If Luke Altmaier is going to be the quarterback, 
those guys would have been there. That's the way this works. There's not just a void of leadership or anything like that going on, but basically until this quarterback decision and competition is decided, you have a situation where the leadership cannot get magnified to the level it needs to. So you're going to have these outside things and you're going to have people doing their own thing because that's the way this works. Unless you have an extremely strong leader, the degree of weaker leadership that you have, more and more people are going to go and do their own thing and kind of look out for themselves. That's what made Matt so special. Everybody loved Matt Corral. But people tried to love Matt Corral for his play and all of this extra stuff, and that wasn't his superpower. His superpower was leadership. And single-minded focus, the stuff that you see with the Carolina Panthers right now, of him always being the first one out to practice. Of course, I would too if the rookie has to carry cleats and things like that. I'd, I'd get out the door in a hurry too. But if it's part of your gimmick to endear yourself to a fan base, you're doing it the right way. That same leadership void, that is a big leadership void that is being left on this Ole Miss football program. And the people that have to set it up have stuff that they have to take care of before this happens to become the leaders. Right now, the leaders on this team, seriously, would be like Zach Evans, Nick Broker, Jeremy James. They're, those are right now the known best players. If you, if you looked at it, you know, Jonathan Mingo could be a leader. You look at it and it's like, okay, this guy's going to start, this guy's going to start, and these two are going to start. These, these guys can be leaders. But what you don't have there is the quarterback. And the quarterback, to me, needs to be the top leader in the room. What Matt Corral did last year was perfect as far as leadership goes. But the quarterback needs to be the big leader in the room. And until this quarterback situation is decided, either Jackson Dart or Luke Altmyer. There's going to be a leadership issue. There's going to be a culture issue within this program. Period. You need that quarterback to be decided. After that, everything can fall into place. But the later that quarterback is decided, the later it might be. Now, luckily for Ole Miss, and this is the luck of all luck. So anybody that claims that basically God hates Ole Miss or Ole Miss can't get any breaks, look at this year's schedule and look at what we have going on. You've got four games until Kentucky comes. You don't have to necessarily – If you, I think Ole Miss can win those first four games and be less than perfect. They can play two quarterbacks and win those four games. But the fifth game is the important one. That's when Kentucky comes to town. October 1st, stripe out, Vaught Hemingway Stadium. That is the important date. So we're building to there. So do not freak out that against Troy if Ole Miss plays two quarterbacks. Do not freak out even against Georgia Tech if Ole Miss plays two quarterbacks. I think Tulsa, I'd probably start to worry. But leadership cannot really hone in until after that job is won. That's just the way the football works. Right now they look at a quarterback and there's not one there. You I mean you got Jackson Dart, you got Luke Altmyer. One of them's gonna win, but you're the starting right guard, Eli Acker. I'm not saying he's any sort of a culture issue, but are you going to listen to Luke Altmaier right now? Are you going to listen to Jackson Dart right now? They have to handle their own business. Once they get their business taken care of, then they can assume the rest of it. Otherwise, it's just bluster. It's all fake stuff, and people can see through that. It's important. I love this quarterback competition. This thing is absolutely fantastic. And I love the fact that these clicks are developing. Jackson Dart, Jalen Robinson, um, going out to Cali, according to On3. They wrote an article about it. Um, and Michael Trigg is his buddy as well. That's the triangle of death in this offense. That is where we're going to make our hay in the passing game. Those guys need to be on the same page. Now, I want to know what Jordan Watkins and J.J. Henry and um, Casey Kelly and um, the new signee from Texas, 
um, what he did at tight end. Who, where were they throwing? Did they have something going on as well? Now, did you include everybody? Did everybody have invites, or was this an exclusive event? If that happens, this is all weird. But like I said, this is all normal, and this all happens within the football team. This is one of those type things that doesn't really get covered because, A, it's everywhere. That's the way it is. And, B, you don't really know how it's going to react. Sometimes, like with LSU in 2019, that clickish behavior becomes into like a super epidemic, and it just becomes a powerful thing. Sometimes it can eat you apart. We'll see what it does. It, I think a lot of it has to do with this quarterback situation and the quickness that we resolve it. But if we do that, we have a chance to be, honestly, really good. Offensively. I, I'm a big fan. Like I said, whenever things came off in the spring game, remember Jackson Dartett was here for like three weeks, four weeks, somewhere in there. And then spring game happened, spring practice happened. And he had to do 18 things at once, and he's only human. And not only that, he's an 18-year-old human. But whenever things worked out in the spring game, whenever you dropped back for an RPO, the read was a pass read. They threw it to Michael Trigg. It was an 8-yard gain or 12-yard gain or something like that. It looked really smooth. Remember, Lane Kiffin said, the three things he is looking for in a quarterback. Accuracy. Doesn't matter how strong your arm is if you can't put it where you want to put it. Timing. You got to know whenever you're going to release the pass. You can't hold on to the football. That happened a little bit in the sugar ball. Can't hold on to the football. That causes turnovers. And decision making. That means don't basically do not turn over the football. Accuracy, timing, decision-making. These are the three keys of a quarterback from Lane Kiffin. None of them have to do with height. None of them have to do with running ability. None of them have to do with arm strength. None of that stuff. All of these things that people said are so important for a quarterback, he doesn't do any of it. Why? Because he understands that you can win with different style players. You can do different things. And you might not run an offense like Dan Marino if you have a weaker arm quarterback or John Elway or somebody like that. You're not 1985 pro-style offense. And the same thing is you're not going to run a Florida-style offense without a Tim Tebow. You're going to have to try and figure out a way to get the most out of your players. Now, this is within the concept. This is what I love because people don't understand what's going on. Um, in the press conference yesterday, Lane Kiffin talked about molding his offense around his players, and that is absolutely true. The defense molded around the players. That is absolutely true. But this is what you need to understand. There's 70% of that offense that happens regardless of how, what type of quarterback you have, what type of running backs you have, what types of wide receivers – linebackers, defensive lines, all of that. And those things are recognizable no matter what system you run, their operation, their tempo, their things like that. There's core things that you believe in. Understand that if you get in a four-man front, you can do that in this outline of whatever this 3-2-6 defense. You just have to set it up. You drop seven instead of eight. You have to practice it. They're not practicing that right now, but you have to practice it if you want to do it. If you want to be a running team, it's pretty simple. All the offense is set up for the team to be a running team, a passing team, all of that. 70% of this offense and defense is in place. The 30% of what, do, and what does and how you do it, that is what needs to be worked out in fall camp. These people that are popping off on Twitter about essentially um, the potential that he could throw the baby out with the bathwater – is absolutely ridiculous. It's just absolutely crazy. And um, I just thought everybody should know that. Anyway, let's hear from Bet Online, and um, we'll be back right after this. 
BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major, major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. I guess you have to say that now because of that um, Saudi tour thing. Um, BetOnline continues to be the top resource for all of your sports wagering information, including live in-game betting scores and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including iTunes and Spotify. Do not forget to rate and review us on um, iTunes and Spotify. Give us a five-star review. You can say whatever you want to say. Just give us a five-star review. That'll help others that are looking for the show when they search Ole Miss, they'll be able to find it. If you don't like me, that's okay. Tell me. Let me know. Just give me a five-star review because even though it might not be your cup of tea, it could be somebody's cup of tea. All right. Anyway, we talked about Jackson Dart for a good bit in the first portion of the show. I was actually surprised about that. But this one's going to be a little bit quicker. This is We're going to take a little bit of, vic, of victory lap. We talked about the Jalen Knox situation. We have talked about that for weeks um, because he was brought in last year, like before the 2021 season, and he couldn't get the transfer to go through or um, academics weren't quite in order, so he was not eligible to play. So he had to watch Ole Miss win 10 games and go to the Sugar Bowl. But he was the guy that was brought in to be the preordained slot, essentially, in this offense. Well, that's before Jalen Robinson and Jordan Watkins and J.J. Henry even took a step. And all of a sudden, Jalen Knox became, I'm not going to say expendable. That just became a busy room. And Jalen Knox is too good of a player just to sit in there. So the rumblings that I've gotten and um, stuff passed to me over the last couple of days is Jalen Knox is out on the outside. Now, the plan is that I think they've told Jalen that they intend to play him inside and outside, real similar to what you might see from Elijah Moore from back in 2020. But the reality of the situation is that just became a really, really talented room, um, and somebody had to go out there. And the 200-pound guy is going to be the one playing on the outside because, remember, these outside receivers, God bless them, they don't get as much work. And – We were talking about this on SEC After Dark last night. Steve Spurrier, when he coached at Florida in the 90s, the players that were the playmakers in that offense were the outside wide receivers, the Chris Dorings, the Ike Hilliers, the Redale Anthonys. Sure, you had the Jack Jackson and Jack Wes Green and all of those in the middle of the field, but the outside was the position that allowed everything to go, made everything click. And that has kind of changed in 30 minutes now or 30 years, I should should say, as most everything is done between the hashes now. And that's because that's where the conflict player is, and everybody is becoming so RPO-reliant. So the outside receivers have less and less to do. So they run off players, obviously, but not too much. They actually do blocking because they want this offense to go so quickly, they need to get back to the line of scrimmage. So if you run a nine route and you're 40 yards downfield, that's going to slow the team down. So, Jalen Knox out there on the outside with Braylon Brown. I think on the other side is Jonathan Mingo. Uh, it's the usual suspects what they're doing. And, and in this offense, you know, for better or worse, it's, it's okay. Um, I, I, I call them 10% Lane Kiffin shot plays. And this is for the outside receivers because they kind of play a thankless position in this offense. I mean, that's just the way it is. There's nothing really negative about it. It's just, just the way it is. And because of that, because of this thankless position, because of um, ways they can do that, they get these 10% shot plays and they need to come off. This is imperative on the quarterback to throw balls that are catchable down the field. Matt Corral was a tremendous deep ball thrower. You can see him. He actually took thing took – took something off of the ball on these deep balls to make sure they were caught, and they were caught quite a bit. But those 10% plays, they're going to be so big. They're going to be so massive. 
And Jalen Knox is a guy that can take advantage of that. I was wondering if it was going to be him or Jordan Watkins that moves outside. Looks like Jalen Knox is going to get the first turn at it. Do not think that um, Jordan Watkins is absolutely safe in the slot. I think they're going to move stuff around and they're going to cross-train some people. But I think Jordan Watkins has a little bit of a body to um, do this as well. And something to watch for as these acclimation days continue and we move on. Oh, I, I swear, guys, I love this stuff. This is so much fun to me. I did 23 videos on all platforms yesterday. 23, including Future Rebels and stuff like that. So go to our social media platforms, um, Locked On Ole Miss on TikTok, um, at the Stephen Willis on Twitter, um, I think Positively Ole Miss, um, the group on Facebook, LO Ole Miss on um, Instagram, and just see all the good stuff we have. Um, most of them are on every platform, so if you sign up for one, you'll get them all, so you don't have to sign up. We don't mix them around on um, platforms, but probably the best one is um, TikTok or Twitter, and you'll see quite a bit of stuff. This is this is unbelievably fun to me, and um, thank you all for um, noticing and um, being so interested in what we are saying. This is really fun. Anyway, Tom Vanderfield is not going to be here today because he's not feeling well. He uh, had a treatment that um, has him a little bit down. He'll be back next week. We're going to have Kara back next week as well, um, along with um, Marche Green and potentially Mike Espy. Um, so we're working on several interviews on the show that we want to talk about. And, of course, Bill Flowers is around as well. I'm telling you, we're, we're working on this 2003 receiving core. We, uh, I'm telling you, there's, there's a surprise that might happen. Um, and if that happens, we'll have, like, we'll have interviewed, like, three of the top five receivers listed on my list for top receivers in Ole Miss history. The only two that we have is A.J. Brown and Laquan Treadwell. Absolutely nuts. Anyway, we're going to come back after a short break. But until then, yeah, man, thank you guys. You guys are amazing. And also, don't forget to leave a comment down below and um, talk about camps and questions because I need to know what you want to talk about as well because I get sent stuff, but I also want to hear from you as well. So, all right, stick around. All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, hit the bell for notifications of new videos going up, with ha which happens quite frequently, as you can imagine. And, of course, upvote the video itself. All those things will help us out. We'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, the third player we want to talk about is David Snigmanusen. We've talked about him several times over the last couple of weeks. And he popped up on Speed Freaks yesterday as Ole Miss releases, like, its plaque of the fastest players and the fastest time in camp um, was Davis Nygmanosin. And him competing at corner, he has a chance to be pretty special at corner, I think. I think he's a pretty special athlete. They sent a picture of him intercepting a pass in the first practice. He has a chance to be really, really good, guys. And... That is good for DeAndre Prince. That is good for Miles Battle. That is good for that competition that we talked about in our top three series right before the camp start. It's amazing. We we called this, you know, several weeks ahead of time, too. Most of these storylines that we're talking about in these acclimation days, we've been talking about for two weeks. So that's kind of good. That actually makes me feel pretty good as well. But he's a good player. He has a chance to potentially start as a true freshman. Because he's such a freak athletic, athletically. Has so many tools. He's 6'1", 6'2". He's a really, really good player. And I don't think people realize, but they will very shortly. Now, I think the first open scrimmage, and it might be the only open scrimmage of the fall, would be, um, th I think, August 13th. Um, they're going to open up, and as far as I know, that might be the only one that I've seen so far. But go that. Lay eyes on these guys. Lay eyes on these guys. See exactly what they look like. 
down in the comments below, tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what I'm missing. Because this channel is supposed to be all about commentary and perspectives. Right? This channel is supposed to be about all of that stuff. So I want to hear from you. I want to know why you think I'm wrong. I want to know, um, there's somebody that comments on our videos um, from time to time. His name is, uh, his username is Therapy Grind. And he'll come on there and like write two or three paragraphs of something he disagrees with. I read every one of them. They're really thought out. And because of that, you know, another perspective goes on the thing. And if we get enough of those, all of a sudden you might get the right perspective. Because I don't think I have the right perspective on everything. I'm biased just like everybody else. But if you get enough of them, you can get a message that is unified. And that becomes the correct message. If everybody feels, I don't want to say feel safe because that's a different connotation. But if people would just put in their perspectives what they're really thinking. Because you're not going to get attacked on here. So, it's going to be fun. And follow us on our other social media platforms like our TikToks and um, Twitter and Facebook. And if you do that, you'll catch the other videos. We've got videos. I'm doing six, seven videos a day for TikTok and um, Twitter. And that's in addition to the ones that pop up on here. So... We're, we're, we're pretty busy right now. It's going to slow down a little bit as the season gets closer. But the first part of camp, I did want to, for lack of a better word, flood the zone with content for you guys. Because I wanted you guys to see that you don't necessarily have to pay money to have good coverage at fall camp. you got other people. you got us. you got the Rebel Walk. And all, between all of that, you get everything that can factually be taken from camp. Everything else is just an opinion can't really replicate that opinion you might respect that opinion but you can't you know that that at that point that is what you're paying for so so we will see what is going on ah today was a, just a great day anyway i want you to get more on the sec by making locked on sec your second listen every day Every day, host Chris Gordy and his local experts, that's me, of Locked On take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. Make Locked On SEC your second listen of the day. Locked On SEC. I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. I hope everybody has a good weekend. I will see you again with this show on Monday. Follow our socials and such. We have some extras and rewinds that are going to come up on the channel this weekend as well. But the next show of this one that will be live will be Monday. Anyway, we'll see we'll see you then. Peace.